In this lecture, we will get introduced to configuration management and automation. We will start by looking at why you might need automation in your environment, how automation tools can help, the different programming patterns such as imperative and declarative, the different characteristics of automation tools like push-pull mechanism, item potency, etc. Let us start with a simple use case. Say you have 10 Red Hat servers, where you'd like to create a user called Sam. The direct approach is to log into all of these servers and run the user add command with specific options to create a user. Now, when the servers are hundreds in numbers, logging into every server and running a command to create a user isn't a practical approach. The first thing that comes to our mind in such cases is to write a script and let the script perform the execution on the servers for you. While scripting is a very proven approach and is implemented widely in many organizations, it comes with its own challenges. One, the person developing the script must have a good understanding of scripting languages, standards, style guides, and a good understanding of the application or task that is being automated. Two, not everyone can code. The percentage of people with scripting and coding knowledge in a team is low. If those who developed the script leaves the team, maintaining the script can be a nightmare. In this example, to develop the script, we first identify the right command to be used in the script. After that, we identify the flags and options to use for each command. Creation of a script for a single operating system is easy, but creating a script for a heterogeneous environment will need additional efforts. For instance, the command to create user differs between different operating systems. The same goes with the options as well. Do we use an uppercase U or lowercase U? The difference between uppercase R and lowercase r. We also need to consider the state of the existing environment. How do you handle a situation where the user already exists? So a script developed for user creation looks like this. It's about 10 lines, but it's far from complete. It only works on one operating system and does not handle all cases very well. This is where automation tools come into play. Automation tools like Chef, Ansible or Puppet provide us with a framework where we can automate the process of user creation in a simple three-line code as shown here. This three-line of code works on multiple operating systems while taking into consideration the existing state of the environment. What we just saw are examples of two types of patterns of programming, imperative and declarative. Let us understand this using a simple analogy. Imagine going into a restaurant and having to say, can I get a dish with some noodles, then stir some tomatoes, tomato paste, water, sugar, salt, and pepper, and then mix some egg and cheese into it, and then bake it in an oven at 375 degrees for 25 minutes. That's kind of the imperative way of ordering a dish. Instead, wouldn't it be great if you could just tell the chef to cook you a lasagna? That's the declarative way of ordering a dish. In the script that we saw in the previous slide, we specify how to create the user, what commands to use on the OS, etc. This is an example of imperative programming pattern. However, on the right is the declarative approach, where we achieve the same results with only a few lines of chef code. There are two models of configuration management tools, push-based and pull-based. In a push-based model, a master server pushes the configurations and softwares to the individual servers. This is like a restaurant where the food is prepared and delivered to the customers. Configuration push is initiated by the master node. Some examples of such tools are Ansible and SaltStack. Think of the pull-based model as a buffet, where the customer periodically walks up to the table and takes what they need. In a pull-based deployment model, the individual servers contact a master server, establish a connection, 
download their configurations and softwares, and then configure themselves accordingly. Configuration pull is initiated by agents at regular intervals. Puppet and Chef are examples of pull-based models. Both of the models are well accepted in the industry. They both have some specific advantages and disadvantages that you should consider when making a decision about the solution you wish to implement. Let us now understand two of the fundamental characteristics of automation tools, known as item potency and convergence. These concepts are not exclusive to Chef. They are generic concepts used by operating systems and other orchestration tools. Since they can be a bit confusing to beginners, let us understand these concepts with the help of an analogy. So, you're at a restaurant and you request for a cup of water. The attendant pours a full glass of water. You drink all of it and ask for water again. The attendant pours a full glass of water again. Then you empty half the glass and ask for water again. The attendant pours a half portion to fill the glass with water. Now that you got into a habit, what if you accidentally order water when the glass is already full? The attendant does not pour any more water since it is already full. This is an idempotent task. An idempotent task is one that yields the same result when repeated multiple times. In this example, no matter what the state of the glass is, every time you request for water, you get a full glass of water. When you use Chef or other automation tools to create a user, the result of the operation is the same, irrespective of whether the user already exists or not. If the user does not exist, it is created. If the user exists already, the operation is skipped. Now let us move on to the next concept, convergence. The term convergence means to bring together. In this case, we are bringing together a set of ingredients to cook a dish. However, each step in the process may be an item potent action. The dish requires cooked noodles. If the noodles are already cooked, skip that part. If they are not, then cook the noodles first. While adding salt, taste to see if there is enough already. If not, add the required amount of salt. What is important here is that, by the end of the process, we always get the same kind of lasagna that always tastes the same, with the right amount of ingredients. Say, for example, you are trying to create a user with specific attributes, such as the user ID set to 9999. Chef tries to configure the user and finds that a user exists already with the same name. So it skips the part of creating the user, which is an idempotent action. However, the user ID is different than the one we requested for. So Chef converges the provided inputs by setting the user ID to the required value of 9999. At the end of the operation, Chef ensures that the state of the user is what we requested for. So in this lecture, we discussed why you might need automation in your organization, how automation tools can help you automate without learning any complex scripting languages and across heterogeneous environments. We understood that automation tools employ a declarative programming approach that is easy to pick up. And finally, how item potency helps us ensure the system is in a desired state. Well, that's it for this lecture, and I will see you in the next. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos to learn complex technology in a simple way by solving fun coding challenges on real environments right in your browser. Visit codecloud.com.